My name is Ndabu Mandela. I am the chairman of Africa Rising in South Africa, and as well as a new organization that we established in New York last year called the Mandela Institute for Humanity. And we're all about trying to activate leadership in young people. Um, and of course, empowering young people to make better decisions to become leaders uh, similar to Nelson Mandela. Um, of course, I've also written a book called Going to the Mountain, Life Lessons from My Grandfather. Basically, I take about 11, 12 lessons um, that I put in the book, and I try to, you know, uh, make Nelson Mandela relate in a way that he's a grandfather, not a statesman or revolutionary, but somebody that all, you know, young people can relate to, and that's a grandparent. I've been reading your book, of course. My mom has as well, and I love it. Oh, that's amazing. Very, very inspirational. You're a master over bubbles. There are two rules to this podcast. Mm -hmm. And one of the rules are quick answers. And the other rule is a little sip after each answer. And I take a little sip after each question. So first question, your grandfather was a person who brought you up. What are the three main qualities which made him a good father figure for you? I would have to say he was very fair. Mm -hmm. uh, he treated all his grandkids the same, all his kids the same. Um, he was, um, he always, if you messed up, you know, he would always teach a lesson. He would always try to show you exactly why you made a mistake. Uh, so he was a good teacher. Um, and I would say, what else? Um, yeah, he was a man who was full of love. He treated everybody the same. Again, uh, not in terms of fairness, but how can, he had a lot of compassion. That's the word, compassion. Perfect. How old were you when you drank your first wine? And do you remember which wine it was? Oh, I don't remember which wine it was, but um, it was actually um here not here but when i stayed with my grandfather mm -hmm. he had a, a little storeroom with some wine in there uh, which Ooh. i probably um you know we took one one night with my cousins uh quick and, and zondra and uh, let me tell you it didn't taste nice at all we're like oh my god how do old people enjoy this stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness yeah I guess so. When you're little, you don't always realize. I used to dip my dummy in uh, champagne. Oh, wow. <laughs> if you could travel back in a time machine to a moment of your life, which one would it be? The moment of my life? Mm -hmm. oh, let me see. Um, well, um, I would say either uh, university when I was mm -hmm. studying rest of Detroit because of course uh, that's where you know you have the most freedom as a young person to, <laughs> to discover yourself to make mistakes um, so I definitely would do some of those things the same but I would change some of them as well mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so you liked your freedom huh freedom man freedom is the best you know uh, before I had kids you know there weren't, not, there weren't too many responsibilities all I had to do was pass and <laughs> Fair I enough. think I would try and spend more time with my parents, you know, because mm -hmm. my parents, both of them have passed away. 
Yeah, sorry about that. If you could hop back on that same time machine to travel any time in history, where would you go and why? Hmm. Where would I go and why? <laughs> From a very young age, I've always been a, a soldier. I wanted to be a soldier. Unfortunately, my parents did not allow me. So I would either go back um, to uh, contribute and become a soldier, uh, you know, in the times of Shaka Zulu, uh, the greatest warrior from the African continent, and learn, you know, the art of fighting uh, in, in that period particularly. Um, or even go back to, you know, the, the civil rights movement or the, what would you say the, the hippies times were? Oh, <laughs> the peace and love times. The I don't know if... Community. Yeah, peace and love time is a nice way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, I think those <laughs> those are the good days, you know, when people when were well, somewhat enlightened and more free, again, you know, able to express themselves. Um, and I, I just also like being a fighter, I guess, you know, fighting for equality, for people's rights. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Your sip? <laughs> what is something you can't do but would love to be able to do? <laughs> Something I can't do but would love to be able to do. Wow, to be honest, um, I, would, I would have loved to, to live in another country, uh, maybe a city like New York, obviously before pandemic, not during pandemic, or even, even a place like London. Uh, I think, but of course now I have kids, uh, and so it's not so easy to just you know up up and move. So yeah, that's one thing I would love to do is to actually live in another country for maybe a year or two. Maybe one day in the future, when your kids have grown up and you can come to London, and I'll bring you wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you didn't forget your sip. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so. Your, okay. Could you tell me the two biggest challenges of growing up under the roof of an icon such as Nelson Mandela? Well, of course, growing up with Nelson Mandela, people have, uh, they put high hopes and uh, you have to act above board and, you know, they expect you to be, a, to carry yourself a certain way. So I definitely think the expectations, you know, always having to, 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 to act above board um and what else yeah i guess you know as young kids the rules the rules that our parents set for us you know you don't always I, agree with them i mean i i can't imagine already me and my parents there was such a big set of rules so <laughs> so i can only like imagine for you <laughs> yeah yeah same thing same thing <laughs> and sip Nope. Your grandfather used to receive celebrities from the world who used to come and visit him. Which were the two which had the biggest impact on you? The biggest impact? Um, I would probably say um, Lennox Lewis, uh, the former okay. champion uh, from, from England. Um, when I met him, you know, he asked me what my name was, and uh, I told him Daba, and he said, wicked man, wicked. And, you know, that just touched me in a, in a, in a, in a, in a certain way that the champion would uh, actually react in such a way. And, you know, having that moment with him that I shared really, uh, you know, just gave me that understanding that, you know, even people from other uh, countries, you know, can... You know, you can meet them and through conversation and, and exchanging cultures, you know, can inspire you. So that was one moment that really inspired me. And um, and also, I would say, who else was there? Who we? Um, <laughs> so many people, you know what I mean, that, that we met. Oh, also, I must say Michelle Obama. Uh, when I met Michelle Obama, she came over to her grandfather's house as well. And she was just so warm and, and genuine. And, you know, she wanted to understand who are you and how do you fit into the family, et cetera, et cetera. And of course she came with her daughters and her, her, 
her, her mother. So that was that was a really beautiful moment of, of family and understanding, you know, who we are and and, and what role we play in, in our community. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> You'll sip, yes. <laughs> And I would love to know, have you ever met the Queen? I unfortunately have never met the Queen, uh, but I did meet his, uh, her grandsons, uh, Prince Harry. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, I must say, jolly good, jolly good old chap. And uh, <laughs> I've seen that, uh, you know, he's growing in his own uh, journey and finding himself in his feet, so, uh, you know, with his wife and you know, I wish him a continued success, you know, as it grows. As you know, well, maybe you know, I'm not sure if you know, but I love wine and I also love fitness. I do a lot of dancing with wine and mm. I believe you did fitness for years and I would love you to take me through the routine you had while growing up and doing fitness every day. Well, um, when I moved into my grandfather's house, um, he actually showed me uh, the importance of exercising and he used to have this medicine ball and he'd actually show me how to use it on himself when he'd do the exercises. And so, and he also was a, a lover of, of boxing, you see. So basically, uh, and then my older brother moved in, right? And he would wake me up in the morning and we would do push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and wow. you know, a few other uh, exercises. And we would do this every single morning, waking up between 5 and 5.30 before school, because you have to be ready for school around 6.30 in the morning, so you can get there by 7. And this became a regiment. And so even when I uh, finished high school and, you know, continued, exercise continued to be a part of my life. And I feel exercise is very important. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's great. I just love talking about fitness because it's so important. People talk a lot about mental health these days, but uh, physical yes. health is a big part of mental health as well, in my and, view. And I think, you know, your physical health can have an impact on your mm -hmm. mental health, you know. So at least that's something you can truly control as a mental health part of your life. Absolutely. I mean, the, the physical, the physical, sorry. No, but yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah, no, I absolutely agree. What is the most memorable place you have ever had a glass of wine with your grandfather? And also, I would love to know the most awkward one you had together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the most memorable one that we had was um, when uh, the, the, the foundation hosted a gala, or rather Prince Harry, I mean, Prince Albert of Monaco hosted a fundraising gala dinner. And uh, me and my family, with our grandfather, got to sit with the royal family uh, on the main table. And of course, you know, there came a time for the toast. And um, it was really just uh, an unforgettable experience. The people who were there, you know, I think it was successful because they raised, raised a substantial amount of money. You know, uh, it was just a magical evening. And then the, probably the worst, because my grandfather i was trying to get this name of he likes basically he likes sweet wine right yeah and we were at a restaurant and now they forgot to, to bring his wine because it ran out or something and so he tried he they, you know they brought him one or two to try and the first one i just remember him taking a sip and going <laughs> made a funny face <laughs> oh no wow, that was awkward. and you know, then the gentleman came and he tried to take it on and he was just like no 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 <laughs> you are the co-founder of africa rising foundation so of course as i've told you before i really admire you for having started that i mean it's just amazing and well done on that would you like to tell me about it a little bit more in depth? Yes, sure. So, you know, the reason I started Africa Rising was because I realized that, you know, people outside of Africa have very little knowledge on Africa. And the little information that they have, you know, was really the <clears throat> misconceptions uh, <clears throat> and the limited view that is perpetuated by mainstream media. And so we wanted to do something to try and change that image. Um, 
but we realize that you know to change this image would really take a long time and maybe one or two generations uh, that long. So we felt it would be important to then work with the young people so that they have heightened confidence um, in, in, in doing uh, what they do. And also to empower the youth and how do we give them heightened confidence and, and belief and understanding of who they are is by giving them tools and resources so that they can you know, become entrepreneurs, find jobs so they can break the cycle of poverty. And so when they travel and they meet people from different worlds, they will talk about Africa from a heightened sense of confidence and, and being. And so we then started with um, uh, youth empowerment um, projects. So we worked with the likes of Oracle, a software company that basically we, where we did a three month training program and computer program and coding for about 180 young people in our village. Uh, we have worked with the likes of Unilever, you know, doing a hygiene course for the ladies in our, in our village. We've done financial literacy uh, with NetBank a couple of years ago. Um, you know, recently during COVID, we had actually received a donation from the Discovery Health um, organization here. That's a health insurance company. And uh, we were planning on initially actually building an indoor sports facility for young people in the, the village, type indoor. But however, because of the immediate need, um, we actually decided to rather than buy food parcels and distribute to those to you know, under, underserved communities. And we were very proud of that. We did that. Uh, it was in, uh, in August uh, where we did the distribution here. In, uh, in in South Africa, so those are the kind of trends we do, and we are very uh, much uh, dependent on you know having corporate partners to fund our programming, and we've been very lucky to be able to have received that that corporate funding, and we hopefully we will continue. But ideally, I think we also as an organization have to, uh, and we have been trying to actually convert ourselves into a social enterprise. You know, because I think the whole uh, model for nonprofit is really changing. Um, yeah. And, you know, in order for us to be sustainable and independent, uh, we need to be able to become a social enterprise. And so that's what we're hopefully going to be in the next year or two. Fingers crossed. I'm sure it'll go well. I mean, my, my biggest dream in my life is to create a charity myself in the future. And to make people's dream come alive, you know. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And there are actually <clears throat> some um, organizations uh, that do that, um, uh, make the dream alive. Uh, I think there's out there and there's a few others. So also maybe join one and see how it goes. Yeah, I've had a look before, but you know, I think so my father when, so he was ill for about 15 years. He had uh, a few cancers, Parkinson's, Alzheimer, dementia, uh, before passing away. Like it was just ill for 15 years. And uh, when I tried to make things happen for him, or to have his last wish come true, or maybe go on a cruise or something, I no one wanted to take the risk of taking him on board. Mm. And so because of that, I thought, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to give the opportunity to everyone to at least have one thing become true that is that is a beautiful beautiful uh project yeah. and uh hopefully i can be part of it <laughs> i would <Cheer>. love that <laughs> <laughs> okay so um can you tell me okay can you tell me two of the most interesting character oh, <laughs> can you tell me two of the most interesting characteristics of South Africa? Wow. <clears throat> characteristics. Well, I mean, that's very difficult, you know. Um, well, what I can say is warm, right? Okay. The environment, is, the environment is warm and the people are warm, right? I don't want to say beautiful because it's such a cliche. Um, can I just say stunning? Can I just say stunning? Absolutely. I love the word stunning. What are your thoughts on the wines we are drinking together? So you have one of my favorite ones from South Africa, I believe. 
yeah, from the Strandveld Vineyard, um, which was supplied by Ellis Wines. And there's also that Cremant yep. that we yep. are drinking now. <laughs> and it's from the Padelou Estate. So from the family of the Chateau Padelou Estate. No, the Cremant is actually very uh, easy on the tongue. Um, it's uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's got that very sweet uh, tinge to it, but I must say it's also soft on the palate. Um, no, I think it's an absolutely easy drinking, beautiful wine that you can use for any occasion. Perfect. And have you tried the Strandveld? I have tried it. It's also, I believe, on the sweeter side, if I'm not, yeah, sweeter. Um, uh, you know, I um, red for me, uh, it really, what can I say? It usually is quite heavy for me. Uh, it really, it puts me in a very uh, sleepy, sort of comfortable, like snug. I, you know, I become yeah, very yeah. snug uh, when I drink <laughs> red wine. And this one, um, it actually was, was, was nice. Yeah, it was, it was delicious. I just find it slightly lighter than some of South African wines and um yes yes 100% lighter 100% lighter <laughs> also I would say it's an easy drinking red wine uh, because many reds are not not as you know not as easy to drink <laughs> thank you <laughs> your sip and I think I forgot mine as well actually <laughs> so See, you need to look at me as well and be like, hey, Sophie, you forgot your say. What is your favorite wine in all the wines you have ever tried in your life? Wow. wow, wow. Um, I recently tried a, a Jordan wine, right? Uh, it was a white wine, um, smooth. Um, it was nice and cold, so it was it was perfect. It was Saturday night, hot night, and uh, no man, this this white wine called Jordan was just absolutely delicious. Uh, I've also enjoyed the Hout, the Hout Cabrier. I must say, is, is is one of the favorites here in South Africa. And as a South African, I must say that Hout Cabrier, mm -mm -mm, the white mm. one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have bit to try it. I haven't side. tried it. Bit on the dry side, but but delicious. Cool. <laughs> Your sip. Yes. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I feel guilty. You know, oh, I don't really, but yeah, you didn't <laughs> want to drink, and I'm forcing you to drink. What's my birthday? You know. It is your birthday, hey. Yeah. So, Yay. <laughs> your wish is our command. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> okay, so have you ever tried English wine? English wine? Hmm, no, I don't believe so. Okay, so when you're coming to London, I am making you taste one of my wonderful English wine people. No, not the people, but like it's called Oastbrook Vineyard and it's gorgeous. English wine is really going up as really? now, yeah. And it's beautiful, but unfortunately, it was so difficult to send it over to you. I tried and I tried and I tried, um, because of COVID and everything, there was just oh, so yes. many problems. And um, yeah, what is it called? Oastbrook. Oastbrook. Oh, yeah, O A S T B R O O K, and. They actually really, really wanted you to taste their wine, and they were like oh, so excited. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And uh, yeah. So when you come to London, you need to tell me. I and um, you know, we're gonna keep in touch for sure. This is sounds uh, great. <laughs> awesome experience so far. I must say something different. You know, something. Cool. <laughs> I like different, and I like having fun, and I like you know yeah. trying to make a change in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, peace and love, as we said. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one of the most fun moments you can recall having in your life the most fun moment mm. ever ever okay i must say when i went to a family holiday in mauritius mm -hmm. that was one of the first times i had with my grandfather and my two knucklehead brothers um and grasa and her kids it was it was really great we, we got to do a lot of uh, you know, uh, sports on, uh, on the ocean. Um, I did um, uh, parasailing for the first time 
It was brilliant. I did scuba diving for the first time. It was brilliant. Uh, so that's definitely one of the first times I had. Yeah. So a lot of first times. Nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you sip. I think I'm going to have to pour myself some more. <laughs> we are at that point, eh? We are at that point. You're right. I know. It's terrible, isn't it? Oh, man. Oh. I think it's I think it's lovely, you know, to be able to share a drink with you on your birthday. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Voila, my glass. Well, I'm full I, again. <laughs> and in the UK, it's still breakfast time, so. You're like, well, here it's lunchtime, so I'm I'm well within my rights, you know, to have a drink <laughs> during lunchtime. <laughs> yes, and I think bubbly for breakfast is the most beautiful thing i just love it <laughs> okay this, one. this is delicious good <laughs> so can you tell me what is the madiba shuffle so the madiba shuffle is a dance that is the way my grandfather used to dance and mm -hmm. he would basically you know when he was happy and he would get on stage and he would basically just swing his arms nice <laughs> and that's how you would shuffle them side to side you know. Okay, like this. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> You'll sip. If you could drink wine with two people you have never met before, who would they be and why? Well, I think maybe Prince. Uh, I would choose Prince, um, the, music, the musical artist, to be one of them. Okay. I believe he's such a character, you know, um, the way he created himself and his music, mm. the way he dressed, everything was just on another level. So I think that would be quite an interesting time, and I'd probably get to learn a lot of things I would never genuinely you know. Uh, not to mention the fact that he grew up, he was a Jehovah's Witness, and I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness as well. Okay. There's a lot of, um, you know, common things there. And the other person, I believe, would be Malcolm X. Mm. Yes, Malcolm X. I mean, have you ever met a more fierce defender of human rights, the confidence, you know, the, the knowledge that he had the way he was able to disarm his enemy. <laughs> For me, he was yes. just one of the most brilliant leaders of, of, of our time. I like it. I can feel his strength and passion when you talk about it as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Your sip? Yes. You <laughs> almost remembered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, sparkling wine or sparkling Sophie? Oof, you know what? That is a tough one. That is a very tough one. But you know what? I'd rather go with Sparkling Sophie any day. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Perfect. You are an incredible public speaker. To anyone who wants to have a voice but is too shy to speak in public, what would your advice be? Well, you know... <clears throat> You have to try and nurture uh, that gift or even that skill. You know, it may not necessarily be a gift, but you know, it can be something that you develop into a skill. And Oops. practice at home, practice with your friends and family. Um, practice in front of the mirror, obviously, right? In the shower even, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so it's like riding a bike. You know, the more you, you, you ride a bike, the, the more tricks you'll be able to do, the more confident you'll become. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just about practice makes perfect. Cool. A big part of me making this podcast is to get some wine awareness out, but it's also to bring more ethnic diversity into the wine world, as well as getting to know the real people behind the wine label. So mm. how do you think this could be achieved? Well, I think this is a great way. Uh, what you are doing currently, Sophia, I must say, is it's fun um, and it's different and it's engaging. You know, you don't only ask uh, fun questions, but you also get into, you know, the, a bit of depth 
about about what we are doing and, and you know what my story is and who I am and what I believe in. So for me, I think you're doing a great job. Um, perhaps, you. yeah, I think I think this is I think this you doing I think this is the right way. And maybe you should maybe I should give you a couple of names, you know, that you should that I can put you in touch with that will you know allow you to con con continuously reach a different audience, but people that you know nonetheless drink wine. I know this. I'd like to introduce you to a couple of people, so we'll we'll chat after this. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> your sip. <laughs> <laughs> so your book is full of quotes. Can you tell me the meaning of a tallest tree catches the highest wind? Tallest tree catches the highest wind. So, you know. <clears throat> As, as young people um, trying to discover ourselves, um, at times it becomes very difficult, um, you know, because of, of the challenges, you know, that, that you face or lack of resources, but we have to continuously to try and find ways to, to be out there um, and to increase our networks. Um, so you really have to try to 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 constantly be at the at the at the forefront constantly be on the know so we are now in covid you know so we can't travel as much we can't be in person as much so what tools are there that i can use to to you know to bring myself higher so i can catch the wind and catch everything that's, that's mm -mm -mm. What i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's fair enough fair enough i thought i'll just ask you about that quote because i didn't see anybody asking you about that quote before and it's one which kind of intrigued me as well mm -hmm. as you know i think it's difficult to manage the people who send you love there's people who will always send you a little bit of hate unfortunately and you just need to to keep that love feeling around you and spread you love everywhere but it's to, tough yeah, it is tough uh but you know like one of my favorite um, comedians said, Cat Williams, he said, you know, the fact that you ha have haters or people that are jealous of you is a good thing. That means you're doing something right. So actually, if in 2019, you had 10 haters, you have to make sure that by the end of 2020, you have at least 25 haters. <laughs> it's a great way of seeing it absolutely yeah, the more haters you get the better and better you are getting at your job so don't be uh discouraged by mm -hmm. the haters let them use that negative information to boost you so you can do better and better and better yeah fantastic <laughs> thank you um did you have your set <laughs> have it okay so in your view what is one thing which needs to change the most in the world um you know we need better leadership that needs to change and the only way that can change is by having young people step up to the plate by having young people make demands on our current governments and leadership structures and even how decisions are made needs to be challenged um we can't continue having 70 year olds and 80 year olds uh you know leading nations that are majority 35 years or 40 years and under you know mm -mm. um there's going to be a clash of ideas there's going to be a clash of generations and how to move forward so we need to make sure as young people that we are making the necessary demands to our leaders so that they include young people in the conversation and in the decision making processes uh, to make their rules and policies of how our societies are governed. Mm, that is so true. So, so true. <laughs> Your sip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, when people talk about Nelson Mandela, they always have something to say. But what would you ideally like them to say about him? I would like to, for them to remember there once was a man who walked this earth that believed in love so much that he, he basically 
risked his own life, risked his family, gave it all up to okay. show the world that love will always conquer anything that is opposite or is contrary to love. So that's what I want people to remember about the old man, that he was a man who truly believed in love and sacrificed everything to gain that love from his people and from the world. Mm. Oh, I almost want to cry. I'm such an emotional being. <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay, Sophie, don't cry. <laughs> Have your sip. <laughs> For me, it's all about love. It is indeed. <laughs> so following on that, I'm a big believer in following our dreams in life. Yes. Would you agree? And um, do you have anything to say to anyone who might think this is impossible? You have to dream. Um, I encourage everybody to dream. Um, and I encourage you to dream so big that your dreams scale you. And I will say, if your dreams don't scare you, you are not dreaming big enough. You must remember that Martin Luther King had a dream, right? Mm -hmm. JFK had a dream of creating a more equitable world. And so did Nelson Mandela. And so did so many people who came before us and have worked and dedicated their lives to achieving those dreams and those ideals. So we can achieve our dreams. Make sure that you have a mentor who loves you and wants to see you succeed, right? Surround yourself with people that love you and want to see you succeed. You must remember that in life, you will come across hurdles, speed bumps, people that say you're just dreaming and you can never achieve your dreams. Remember to, as you're working towards your big dream, to take small steps, right? There's a weekly goal, there's a monthly goal, right? And actually celebrate those goals that you achieve along the way so that you can continue that momentum and that positive energy as you move towards achieving that big dream. Without dreams, without hopes, what are we here on this world to do? You know, I dream of making of, of, of a world where my kids don't have to fight, fight prejudice anymore you know, and they find new things to fight, not HIV. We've been fighting HIV for three decades. We've been fighting prejudice for over 500 years. How much longer must we fight prejudice when we know that the difference between our skin is less than 1%, 0.1%? Why are we fighting when we have 99% in common, you know, as black and white people? This is silliness. So I dream of having a world where there are no more borders and people truly can judge each other by the content of their character, not the color of their skin or their hair or the texture of their beard. Yeah, and we all breathe in the same manner. We all have, well, almost all the same organs. And yeah. I mean, we all want I the same thing. You know, for Absolutely. You want safety. Uh, you want uh, an environment where you have access to good health care and good education and where you can pursue your dreams. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Cheers to that. You sip. Cheers to you. <laughs> so yeah, I'll sip on that one as well. Okay. So what is your next big project? Well, our current project that we've been working on is the next big one. Mm -hmm. um, it's called 100 Mandelas. Okay. And we came up with this project in 2018 where I felt that we need to continue the legacy of this, of this great man. Uh, people cannot forget about him. And so if we agree that Nelson Mandela is one of the greatest leaders in the world, can't we find a way where we can teach young people the leadership style and the values of Nelson mm. Mandela and inspire them to lead in the same light as Nelson Mandela. Mm. So we created a framework of a program where we will get young people, you know, to travel to South Africa. Sorry about that. Nice. We'll get young people to travel to South Africa and walk in the footsteps of Nelson Mandela. So go to his birthplace in the Eastern Cape where he was born and, you know, where he, you know, you can see he's part of the royal family of the mm -hmm. Temple tribe. And what was his role coming from the junior house? 
um, and you then go to Johannesburg where he became an activist and became a lawyer. And then you go to Cape Town where he was incarcerated uh, on Robben Island. And what were the lessons there that he learned? So we, that is our next big project to have a, a, a global one, right? Where we attract people from all over the world and who will go on this program, an African edition and a South African edition. And the reason for that is because we believe there are certain different messages that we should highlight when I'm talking to the South African audience versus mm -hmm. the African audience versus the global audience. But ultimately, these are the same values that exist across the board, you know? So I can really see it in front of my eyes, to be fair. I, I'm very visual as a person and I can just see it really happening. And it's such a fantastic idea, literally. I can just see stages everywhere, speakers, and yeah, no, it's yes. fantastic. Yes. And if you ever need anyone to help you awareness of this project in the UK, let me know. And Thank I will try my best to get it out there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Maybe we can even, you know, do one for, for, for kids and coming from London, you know? Yes, absolutely. That would be amazing. Yeah. Your sip? Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think I've got a visitor. I don't know if you can see my cat. Where is <laughs> I'm he? I'm so sorry. No problem. Maybe come. I couldn't see him. Oh, there he is. Can, can you see? <laughs> What's his name? Oh, she's called Baby. Oh. It's my mother's fault. <laughs> ah, Baby. No, not coming here. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Very independent cat. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's cats for you. Like my mom, you know, <laughs> a temperament of her own. <laughs> we still have a little bit of bubbly in our glasses. Right. Is there a song that you sang with your grandfather? Hmm. So the song that my grandfather loved, well, there was two actually. Mm -hmm. But I once caught him singing the song and I knew he was a happy man. Um, it's the Click Song by Miriam okay. Makeba. Okay. <laughs> very difficult because she's speak, she's singing Hossa, which is mm. my traditional language of birth. Although, you know, my mother's actually Zulu and my father's Hossa, but I still call it my mother tongue nonetheless because I was raised with the with the with the I was raised also in Soweto, a little bit of everywhere, mm -hmm. even in, in KwaZulu Natal, actually. Um, but yeah, I think my father's side was just a little bit more dominant. Okay, fair enough. And can you teach me one sentence maybe of it? <laughs> <laughs> Is a one sentence going to be very difficult? <laughs> very very <laughs> I think maybe it would be, I can just maybe, you know, for the audience, um, not having heard the, the click language. So, we are direct descendants of the Bushmen, mm -hmm. uh, some here in South Africa. And so, you know, when they describe their language, they say click. So, mm -hmm. in, so a doctor in my language mm -hmm. is, wait, wait for it. Yes. Ukeha. Ukeha. <laughs> no. <laughs> There you go, there you go. But you're almost there. You're halfway there. You're halfway there. <laughs> okay. And then, so the, basically what is she saying in the song is the doctor of the road is the dung beetle. Okay. Ukeicha, the doctor of mm -hmm. the road. Lend Ngu twane. Yeah. Ukeicha, then lendleha. Ukeicha. Ukeicha. Lendlela. Lendlela. Wu. Wu. Congo. Congo. Twane. Kwane. Twane. 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 Ooh, la 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 la. Lendlela. Oh, Twane. Oh, Lendlela. I go. Oh, Twane. Oh, Lendlela. Click, 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 click
Click, click. <laughs> I will learn it one day. I promise I'll be getting it one day. Click on by Miriam Makeba. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. Well, I'll have a sip to that. And you're so alive, touche. <laughs> touche. Now a French is coming out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just an honor to have you on my podcast today. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Also, it's such an honor as well to be speaking to you and drinking some bubbles with you first thing in the morning of my birthday. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. Uh, you are very sparkling, I must say, Sophie. Very sparkling, very bubbly, great energy, um, great questions. I really had a fantastic time. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. And have a lovely rest of the day. Okay. Please enjoy your birthday further. Yes, absolutely. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a last sip. Mm. <laughs> Ciao.